I'm Sean from Offload Rugby Media. I'm Simeon from the TikTok Ref. Guys, I'm Murray, also known as Boss for Rugby HQ. And you're listening to the Rugby Connection Podcast. For the fans, by fans. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Rugby Connection Podcast. Who would have thought it? We've, we've hit double digits. It's just me and Sean this week. Sean, how are we getting on? Yeah, no, brilliant. Thanks, Murray. It's been a, it's a grand, grand week. Uh, obviously working a lot. Missed the Lions game once again, unfortunately. Very sad tale, but yeah, it's it's heartbreaking. But um, no, I've recovered from it, luckily. Um, but how are you, Murray? How, how have you been? I'm really good. Um, we did scrumming during this week at training, so that was a whole different ballgame for me. Never caught up for scrum, so I'm counting that as a win. Um, I went, to, I'm busy Saturday, uh, went to the Dundee set to support the team. It was the first tournament. Um, the boys came up short, lost in the final, 19 points to 14, but still a great day out. And the women's team, how five Harlequins, won the tournament, so well done them. And turns out uh, Rob Kelly was there. No, oh, wow. <laughs> Glasgow, yeah. Found that out today on Facebook. Like, Scottish rugby and like some of like players like going around like local clubs for tournaments and all that. And like Stuart McAnally was here, and Darcy Graham was there, and mm. Rob Harley was in Dundee. Wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> so yeah, nice one. How was the um, the whole event? The seventh event was a bit of a fest- festival atmosphere at it, or it was actually quite good. We, we had to buy tickets, but that's. It's normal. Like team, every team is in like hard times because of COVID. Mm. Um, but you know what? They got the weather for it. Great day out. A lot of teams there was a, a Fijian team there. Oh, wow. I think they were all military, but like, yeah, everyone loves the Fijians at sevens, and these boys went for it. I think they were more of like the social team. They just there for fun. But my God, the size of them were terrifying. Yeah, I'd say it's actually properly terrifying, like nightmarish stuff playing against a lot of Fijians. Yeah, but the team did well. Final for the men's and winner for the women's. So can't complain, really. No, absolutely. Great perfect night, great weekend for your club, anyway. Yeah, lots to build on from. How about you? How's your club? Do you have any games at all? No, haven't had any games yet. First one is this coming Thursday, which I'm excited about. We've it's an away game though. It's like an hour. It's only an hour and a half down the road. It's not too far, but um, yeah, no, looking forward to it. I'm kind of nervous all the all the same as we were talking about last week. But they're for our, yeah. each of us their first first year senior rugby. But uh, no, looking forward to it. It'll be great back. Hopefully, playing some rugby. Yeah, well, all the best. And my I think my first outing, hopefully, is this coming Saturday on the. 14th, the second team is playing at home, the first are away so hopefully get some game time in and see how I get on now let's go on to proper professional rugby <laughs> your beloved MLR has finally came to a close, the final the Geltinis versus, uh, was it Atlanta I believe? It was, yeah, yeah see, I know, see I know my stuff now there you go, enough listening to Sean and I know the MLR, that was the final <laughs> It was good actually, and now you're uh, you're an MLR connoisseur after that Scott interview. He imparted a lot of wisdom from Murray, <laughs> but um, no, it was a great final. It was held in the Coliseum, which was the home of the Los Angeles Rams after they relocated from St. Louis to um, LA. Great stadium, I think it's seventy eight thousand seater. It's an iconic stadium. It, it was the Rams' home initially back before they moved to St. Louis. Yes, it's very complicated. They moved from Los Angeles yeah. to St. Louis back to I think somewhere else as well, back to LA. But great stadium. Was, I think 78,000 seats. There was, I think, a total of 7,000 fans at it, which for, you know, US rugby is not bad. Like, now obviously it's a championship final. You'd probably hope to be more, but that's a good yeah. turnaround. I think that's the best ever turnout there has been for a major league rugby game, which is brilliant. Like, for its fourth season and having one season which was completely disregarded by COVID, that's some pretty good numbers, and um, I like. I can't wait until you know, be it a couple of years down the line, where you know, hopefully there'll be no COVID and more people will be willing to travel and maybe ho- host more finals in the Coliseum. But I think that venue has the like the um, potential to really be like a you know electric atmosphere on either MLO or Championship final day, or as we were discussing with Scott, either US International or the Rugby World Cup down the line. But what an atmosphere! Um, obviously the Giltinis. Came away with the win, 31-17 win. Um, I think it's fairly convincing. Matt Gitto, you know, unsurprisingly, he got man in the match. He was he was brilliant. He was very good. Uh, still still looked like he had it in fairness. So you never know. Um, 
uh, yeah, he's still uncertain, I think, about his future, but he was he was brilliant and you know he's still going strong at 38 years of age, I think he is. Could be 39, I'm not even sure, but he's still going very strong. <laughs> like a fine wine. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Same with <clears throat> Adam Ashley Cooper. He played pretty yeah. well. I think he's confirmed to retire, I think. So um, Yeah, I was I think that I've seen the post match interview that like Adam has confirmed that he's he's bowing out and I mean what a career. Yeah. Unreal. Is that how how good was Adam Master Cooper? And my girl got asked, and he was like, I, I don't know. We'll see where I'm at. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully, if, you, if the body's holding up, we might see him for another year. But yeah, great yeah. game. Johnny Ryberg, he's, uh, I think he's either from Los Angeles, he's, he's American anyway. He scored two tries for the Galtinis. Um, he's a winger. He was playing like he's a big fella. He's like, you know, you wouldn't want him running at you. He was playing as if he was like a flanker, you know, kind of hitting crash balls. Um, he scored two tries. 20 minutes into the game and then another one two minutes later um, they're you know pretty well worth tries um, and then from Atlanta they tried to have a bit of a comeback I think they scored you know LA really had a comfortable lead throughout and they I think they scored two tries within the last 10-ish minutes Ross Deacon came off the bench former um, New York player he's actually Irish he was born in San Francisco but I'll just put it out there that's the Irish connection well in fairness for the Giltinis um, Sean Mc McNulty, Harry McNulty's brother, he was on the bench. He came on, and Luke Carthy was also on the bench. Um, US international now didn't get on, I don't think, but um, yeah, that's the Irish connection. But one player who also did score a try was DTH Van der Merva, uh, the Canadian international. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, he's been had he had a flying year, especially the first half of the season with the Giltinis. But um, yeah, no fair play to Giltinis. They've only lost three games. They've lost a few amount of games all year. Um, one of them was a loss to New York, New York, but. I'll take that, but um, no, fair play to Kiltini. He's deserving winners. But one thing I will have to say for Major League Rugby is Scott mentioned it on the um, on the interview we had with him a couple of weeks ago. Since then, there had been no more games cancelled in throughout all of Major League Rugby's year. 99 games played, zero cancelled. That is an amazing feat. COVID had absolutely nothing on the league and fair play to George Kellerou, the commissioner. Like, what a feat. Great championship final, fair play to them, great success and looking forward to more uh, hopefully exciting rugby in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was incredible, the fact that they got basically an untouched season. Yeah. And hopefully it's a sign of good things to come around the rest of the world. Moving to now, we go to New Zealand, and it's it's just a fortress, let's be honest. Mm. Eden Park. I heard it before the game even kicked off against Australia. They hadn't lost at Eden Park in 27 years, and hadn't lost to the Wallabies at Eden Park in 35 years and the streak continues mm. 33 25 to the old box what were your thoughts on the game i mean you know there's new zealand i think in fairness they were fairly comfortable throughout um but i think maybe the scoreline maybe flatters australia a little bit but I, I think when you just take the scoreline for what it is i think you know australia would take that like an eight point loss isn't too bad considering you know for the last three years the amount of people and news articles you've seen about australian rugby falling to pieces you know an eight point loss i'd take that if I was Australia, but I think the All Blacks, for me, looking at it, I actually didn't watch the game. Actually, Murray, that's the question I have for you. Did you actually get to watch the game live? I've seen, I've seen it. Yeah, I've, I've watched the game. Yeah, yeah, because I, I was like, I obviously there was a lot of controversy during the week about uh, Sky Sports obviously weren't showing it, um, and a lot of people were giving out like, oh, where can I watch it? So uh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe Ruby Pass picked it up, but um, yeah, no, I didn't get to see it live. I'll say, I'll say that much. <laughs> but um, I think from what I saw. The All Blacks, they looked a little bit sloppy at times, to be honest. They kind of some uncharacteristic errors, but then at other times they looked very slick, you know. So I think they're deserving, you know, they're deserving winners of this game. But it'd be interesting to see if Australia can, you know, fight back in the, the next test. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, before I go into details on the game, massive congratulations to Aaron Smith getting his 100th cap for the All Blacks. He's only the 10th man to do that. It's crazy when you think about it. Mm-hmm. But there's a little list that came up and the legends that have got in that 100 club on very deserving to be in there. Richie McCall, Dan Carter, Miles Milo, Maina, um, Mel Lamu, Conrad Smith, Kieran Reid, uh, Sam Whitelock. I think that's all of them there. I think I just rattled them all off there. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but I can't think of realistically a better nine in the modern era hmm. to get the 100 caps and rightfully deserved. Um, the game itself, it was actually a very enjoyable game. Richie Mawanga, doing Richie Mawanga things. I'm, I'm guessing you've seen the try, the interception try that he, he pulled off. Yeah. Unreal. And actually, that came 
five minutes after the best team try I've ever seen to be disallowed. Yeah. Uh, this was unreal. This was like a scrum from the five meter line on the all black side. Mm. Um, popped off to Mawanga. Mawanga broke clear, passed off to Anton Leonard Brown, popped off to Havili, found space for Rico Yuani, went back inside, got to Aaron Smith. Aaron Smith pops it but forward to Brody Ritalik. That the try was disallowed, but they kept playing at live speed. Got out to Severis. Severis does what Severis does and dots over the line, but they brought it back, PMO it, and it was quite clearly a forward pass. But mm. yeah, it was unreal. The fact that like they had that much space and the offloads, phenomenal. Chef's kiss. Can mm. complain. I, think- I know it was. I know it wasn't allowed, but just yeah. Yeah, I think that's like the all black rugby that we all love to see. Like when you're thinking back, you're, um, for me, that kind of reminds me of just like 2015 All Blacks, you know, just the way that they you know, make things look so easy. Like that's class from the All Blacks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but this thing, I've always I've always been told this when I'm like at rugby uh, training or that. Um, the All Blacks don't do anything special. They just play simple rugby very well. Hmm. Yeah. Good point. And, and when you actually break it down, yeah, you're right. Like we we've done this. I've done this on Thursday, and and yeah, it's just it's just repetitive training, and obviously high end players mm. does make a big difference. But you know what? I'm looking forward to next week. Rugby Championship returns in full next week. It's it is bled as well too, but it's part of it's the first game of the Rugby Championship, and South Africa, Argentina. But speaking of South Africa. The third test, the third and final test. Before we get into it, well done, South Africa. Rightfully deserved. Um, and there's only one man to ever do it. Monny Stein, the legend himself. 12 years ago, I think it was like his second cap. I think it was actually his first caps when he got in the Lions Tour in 2009. Oh, wow. Slotted the winning penalty in the dying minutes of the second test back in 2009 to confirm the win for South Africa. And 12 years later, he comes off the bench, 37 years old, and slots the winning penalty again. Don't let him do it again. <laughs> I, don't want, I love Morningstein. I've always been a big fan of Morningstein, but please don't let history repeat itself. <laughs> it felt like there was two bits in that game that I thought history repeated itself. So Morningstein slotting the winning penalty. It was like 12 years ago. The way Chess and Colby scored, it looked very similar to how he scored in the World Cup final. Yeah. I know it wasn't Farrell that tackled him this time, it was Liam Williams, but like there's the way Sky Sports filmed it, I'm like, that's par for par. The, the exact same thing yeah. that happened. But let's talk about one particular maverick, <laughs> as we call him. Finn Russell came on a lot earlier than expected. Dan Bigger got injured in the first 10 minutes hopefully Dan Berger makes a speedy recovery we don't wish anyone gets hurt mm. but I mean Finn has admitted since that the game plan that Warren Gatlin had got thrown straight out of the window as soon as Finn touched the pitch he admitted he did not follow the game plan at all yeah. and you know what it worked I know the Lions got beat but people were saying Finn can't kick it goal wrong he slotted them from 40 45 metres with ease yeah. He controlled the game the way he wants. He was popping them off into the inside to Robbie Robbie Henshaw, to Bindiake, chip and chase for Josh Adams, getting Liam Williams involved from fullback, getting his Scottish counterpart Duhan, van der Merva involved. Just honestly, the perfect game. And I think the only way it would have been more perfect is if the Lions won the game. But there's only so much one man can do. And you know what? I'm just going to make this claim. Ben Russell, top three fly halves in world rugby. Easy. Yeah, I back that. I mean, I think Ben Russell, he finally gets, he's getting some of the credit that he has deserved and is deserving of. You know, he's, I think, obviously you call him a maverick there, but I think in fairness, he's kind of like, he's he's kind of nearly, dis, not distancing himself completely from that because he's a brilliant yeah. maverick, but he's like, yeah. people forget of how such a good game manager he is. And people say, when they think of Maverick, like, oh, yeah, he's a bit of a loose cannon. He can win you some games and lose you others. But I think he's a brilliant player and he finally oh. is getting the credit. Like, Yeah, I've always said that. For, I just I just call him Maverick because that's what, that's what yeah. people call him. 
So everyone who I'm on about as soon as I say it, but I've always said if you watch Finn play, act, like I actually sit and watch him play, mm. he is five, six, maybe even seven phases ahead of everyone else. Mm. And I can't remember who it was. Um, we discussed discussed it in the comments on like my uh, review after the game, like how good was Finn Russell? And somebody was like, the way he plays and the way he sees the game would be a, a lovely head coach. And I can't agree more. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, he's he's earning, like, you know, people forget that he is being paid and earning the big bucks at Racing. Like, people kind of just see him yeah. as just like, oh, he's just a starting tenth for Scotland. Nothing really more. But he's earning big bucks at Racing. And as you said, easily make a good, you know, head coach. Like, with his rugby brain, as, you're, as the way you're describing him there, sounds like he's playing chess when everyone else is playing checkers, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well said. I can agree all of that. Couldn't agree more. Um, I think this is going to be like a fun appreciation episode. I'm just on such a high. Like, I know <laughs> I was I was devastated when Lions uh, lost the series. I thought we I thought before the game we had it. Mm. I thought Lauren Gatlin's changes were the ones that were needing fixed, mm. and obviously that wasn't the case. I don't think Liam Williams did himself any justice at all. He got brought in because Stuart Hogg couldn't like defend or c- come under the high ball. Liam Williams couldn't do that either. Mm. And I'm not bashing him for getting stepped by Colby because facts in the five meter channel, everyone gets stepped by Chess and Colby. Doesn't matter who you are. Mm. Yeah. So that's I'm not criticizing Liam, Liam Williams for that. But the fact that he got brought in to protect the high ball mm. and almost be that missing jigsaw piece and it didn't work mm. I I don't even feel smug about it I know like you know probably more than like anyone I don't like Liam Williams <laughs> but I, I always put it to the side like look in the Lions series if he was the one to score the winning try fantastic Lions have won like I'd be more happy at that mm. but when he has put when he comes when he gets brought in to be almost the saviour and then doesn't do it, I kind of feel like oh, that just backs my claim more. Like, Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, I, I'm not being like smug or arrogant about it. Like, I do get why Liam Williams is selected. He is a great, he is a fantastic player. Like, all my feelings for him aside, like, he is great under the high ball. He, he can usually defend pretty well. Mm. But he's just not my cup of tea and that's, just never going to change and I think when I made the claim that when I made my selection from the third for the third test and I had Stuart Hogg still starting like because Liam Williams won't make a difference and he didn't make a difference yeah no I think that's that's absolutely fair like you know just while you were mentioning Liam Williams obviously there wasn't a lot he could do with that Shazen Colby try even any great fullback but yeah. While we were mentioning about Shazen Colby, obviously he was getting a lot of appreciation as well, just like we were giving to Finn Russell. Um, you know, obviously he's done so much in the last couple of years from going from, you know, a few years ago. I'm sure you've seen the videos of, you know, back, was it four or five years ago when South Africa said, oh, you know, he should really move to scrum half. We need, you know, he's not a very good winger and he's too small. And, you know, then he goes on and, you know, starts with the spring box. Remember, he goes from the bench, you know, becomes a bench player, then to starting winning the World Cup and then look at what he's done with Toulouse. But, I, yeah. I, I read something this morning, and I think it might have been Squid Rugby on Twitter. And I think he said that Jesen Colby has only scored, I think is it something like 10 international tries? But of those tries, one has been in the World Cup final, one has been... And one's a Lions series. Yeah, one, he just won a Lions series. One has been against New Zealand, in New Zealand. Um, like, that's just three of them. I'm sure there's many more, but massive tries. He's only scored 10 of them, but he's on, in such important games. He's a, he steps up for big games. He's only got 16 caps, because I got asked... By our beloved friend, and oh, no, I wasn't Kyle. I thought it was Kyle that asked. Uh, somebody asked me a very good question the other day, yeah. making a fifty, a uh, combined fifteen of players, uh, fifty caps and more. Hmm. And I started like having names in my head before I started writing it down. Like, yeah, he's been there for ages, and sure. And I'm like, Cheston Colby feels like he's been there for ages. And yeah. I looked up, and he's only got sixteen caps. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I genuinely thought he was at least. Like 42, 43 yeah. caps. I mean, but, oh. 
Yeah, that makes it even more kind of, you know, just amazing what he's done, like, in such a short yeah. time. Like, you know, like, that is no easy feat, like, you know, fair play to him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is what it is. Well done, South Africa. They are the world champions for a reason. Like, you win the big games, you rise to the occasion. And and they did do that. There was some questionable calls. There's, there's always going to be questionable calls, regardless of what game it is. There was one that really caught me off guard, and I think at that time it really infuriated me. I won't be able to explain as well as Simeon ever could because I'm not a referee. Yeah. South Africa was given a penalty with 90 seconds to go, and you get a minute to kick the ball. So I'm like, well, that's it, finish then, if you play it smart. Mm. And it looked like Herschel Yanchi's tapped the ball with his foot, which oh, is a quick tap. Yeah. And the referee brought it back and said, no, he didn't. I'm like, oh, mm, yeah. he did, though. Yeah. I, I, he, he definitely did. Like, that ball went a good two, three yards in front. Like, that, that was a quick tap. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I saw, I know what you're talking about. And I, I saw yeah. it, it did look, you know, I think in a normal game, that would have been play on. But I think, first of all, what was he doing? You know, tap and go like there. Like, you only had yeah. a couple of minutes left, like straight in front. But I think in fairness... I think from looking at now, I don't know where the mark was. And obviously it's down to like very like marginal and probably, you know, referee interpretation, whether it was on the mark or not. But I think the referee had to kind of, he had to think, you know, was he within the mark or was he just outside the mark? And I think the referee was going to let it play, but then he was like, uh, he was just outside the mark and benefited the doubt and bring it back, you know, that kind of way. Yeah. But I think, yeah. I think the ref was trying to save his own skin on that one right. than anything. Yeah. But any, you know, any other you know what? End of the day, it was it was a fantastic series. Obviously, it's very weird without this red. Yeah. But I mean, we when we started this show, we weren't even sure if the tour was actually going to happen because of COVID, and the fact that it did, I'm very happy for it. Like I'm, I can personally say, I've been. I got given the opportunity to go to a once in a lifetime game. I got to go to the Lions mm. opener against Japan, and nothing will ever take that away from me. Like I've I've been there. I've seen yeah. the Lions play. Yeah. Obviously, I'd like I'd love to go to one of the countries as part of the tour, but mm. the money in that I can't afford realistically unless the next head coach wants to. When, I'm, a, I'm a forward I can play in the back so very versatile so there you go yeah. I mean maybe maybe there might be a position of um, you know the position of bagman might open up so maybe Paddy Rall O'Reilly okay. I'll away. take that <laughs> absolutely I, who wouldn't but um, I think I think just as you mentioned it there obviously there was uncertainty about whether the tour would go ahead I think even during the tour even after I think the second or third warm up game there was even a lot of talk saying oh will they even be able to play the test because obviously they had to move um, the one of the tests or two was it one or two of the tests from Johannesburg up to Cape Town and there was a whole lot of uncertainty to do with you know COVID and other political things going on in South Africa but I think it's, it's great that it went ahead as you said pity without fans but just on some other lines news I heard today is that there's talk that um Australia in the next tour in 2025 there's a talk that they might try and include the Pacific Island teams in terms of warm-up games but they might even be test matches so Tonga okay. Fiji, yeah it might even get to play the Lions and it might even be better um, in terms of what people might be more interested in seeing the Lions play against those teams and I heard that they're also thinking of maybe playing one of the tests in the Melbourne Cricket Ground I think it is which is a 100,000 seater stadium which would be like an immense oh that'd be amazing yeah, so there you go. That's um, something to look forward to for all our listeners for 2025. Can we go? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, why not? Let's, you know, let's mortgage the house and, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> details, details. Sell yeah. the house. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> we'll live in a caravan, you know. <laughs> Drive but, the caravan to Australia. It'll yeah. take a while, but we'll get there. Even better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I think I, even there is, I think, I'm not sure where they're from. Was it either, I, they might have been from Ireland or even maybe England, but people remember, I think they cycled from either Ireland or England to Japan to the last World Cup. So maybe we could do that, like oh, Simeon does. Oh. You know? no, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not cycling how Simeon does. <laughs> we will we'll mention that though. What on earth Simeon did this 
past week. Yeah. Nice. 300 kilometers. I can't remember the exact places. I think it was from like Bangor to some place else in Wales, like north to south to north. Yeah. Or north to south. Anyway, to Bangor, I, a, a big big shift on the on the bike. Yeah. 300 kilometers. All uh, money he earned goes to the Loose Heads charity. Mm. If you're a rugby person, you know who Loose Heads are. They focus yeah. on mental health issues. They tackle stigma, as they say. And yeah, great cause. Great lad. Well done, Simeon. Absolutely. If, if you're listening. Yeah. He, better be, li- he better be listening. I li- I'm <laughs> just going to say, I listen to it like the show's available. I do listen to it and watch it and see where we go wrong or if I've made any mistakes. <laughs> you know, you're just doing your video analysis. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like episode four. I banged on about a certain player. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. One to watch. He's a some half for Moana Pacifica. He's not. He's a winger for the Chiefs. I, pro- <laughs> I would have heard it back. As soon as I heard it, oh, that's just, that's not right at all. But it's fine. We we'll move on. We, we improve each episode. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just on that, like, fair play, I mean, like, that's, you know, that's class. We'll, we'll be able, we'll, um, next week when he's on, or if he's on next week, we'll, uh, we'll give him a proper, uh, we'll give him what he deserves. Proper round of applause and all that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But now, we kind of start winding down. The Lions Tour is finished. Mm. Rugby Championship starts properly next week. We've got New Zealand, I'll show you again. We've got South Africa. Now fully in the swing of things, they're against Argentina, mm. who haven't who we haven't seen since last year because it was Five Nations last year. Yeah, because South Africa pulled out because of COVID, and it's, it's exciting back to mm. the full, full tournament, the full plan teams. Mm. But with every positive, there is a negative. We discussed briefly last week that New Zealand and Australia rugby league. Pulled out of the upcoming rugby world, a uh, rugby league world cup. Mm. That's now been changed till next year. So the whole tournament's been moved to next year. Mm. So I feel like we're getting, we're getting so far, and then we're getting uh, pushbacks, and yes, the world's a mess. Let's be honest. Yeah, it is a pity, but as you said, you know, hopefully things are coming to. Hopefully, with this pandemic now, I don't know, but hopefully things are coming to. You know, we're into the let's say the. The, the final act of this pandemic, hopefully. Not it won't be over tomorrow, but maybe in a couple of months. We never know. Maybe it's start next uh, year. I don't know. So. Who knows? But. Just even normal things. Yeah. Just, I don't... I'm not saying rush back, but don't... I don't want limited capacity in a big stadium. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I want, especially for the autumn test, I want Murrayfield to be absolutely bouncing mm. 77,000 strong. Yeah. I mean, you're co- right now because we're allowed to. You are coming across for yeah. the 30th of October for the Scotland Tonga game. Yeah. Simeon would have lived in Edinburgh for a month then. Yeah. I've got my tickets. So the, the Connection podcast will finally yeah. be in the same room and we could some fun anyway with it and see where it goes. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think. I think it's you know, being optimistic is the important thing. And I think, it, you know, I think things are starting to look brighter, especially like most of the international teams are, you know, trying to sell at max capacity. Obviously, it's early out and you don't know whether things will change. But, you know, it, that would be nice to see. And I heard during the week, not that I tune into much news except for rugby or even politics, but I heard somehow I heard that Wales are, have now opened their nightclubs or something like that, which, you know, that's that's good, you know, but that's really mad as well. Like, it's hard to comprehend from an Irish point of view because, like, you know, we're still, you're still only allowed to get back inside the, the pubs as of last week or something, so you need your vaccine, sir. So it's really, it's oh. really mad. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, we're the same as well. It's like, things open up. That we, so we're in, like, what we call level zero now. Oh, yeah. But next week, it's just like no holds barred next week. Do what you want. You don't even have to wear a mask next week if you don't want to. Yeah, I think that's a bit of a. I think that's a bit of a. It's not a great. I like. It's great that things are like you know coming off, and I think it's also a bit of a crazy strategy, especially when I heard about Boris Johnson. He said it's basically just putting. I don't want to get too political, but obviously it's basically just putting the responsibility away from him and just onto the people. And when there's cases, yeah. you're just going to blame the people. Like, come on, you, you can't have it both ways. Like, you know. Yeah, totally. And that's that's all we're going to say on that one. Yeah. We, we're not. We're, we are a rug. We are a rugby <laughs> podcast. We're not a political podcast. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll leave we'll leave Boris Johnson to you know go and you know bump off a eleven year old Japanese child the next time he's playing rugby. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Absolute memories, all of it. <laughs> um, but you know, got stuff to look forward to. You've got your game, your first game on Thursday. I've got my hopefully first game on Saturday. I imagine the squad will get announced Tuesday night, maybe Thursday the latest. Yeah. But yeah, fingers crossed. Can't tell if I'm nervous or not. I don't really think about stuff until it happens. So, yeah, but I'm sure I'm sure you'll all hear about it. Um, moving on br- uh, briefly, I'm just gonna quick fire you with something, Sean, just to fill the, a little bit of time for from ref talk this week. Because sure, yeah, I don't actually think there was much to talk about from refereeing standpoints this week. Anyway, was there really realistically? Yeah. There wasn't. Didn't seem like there was too much controversy on social media, which is good, you know, especially considering the whole, you know, Razzie and referee thing. Actually, just very briefly, um, just an update. Obviously, I had a bit of a rant last week on Razzie Erasmus' <laughs> own video, but um, obviously, which has progressed since we've recorded that episode, um, Razzie and South African rugby are going to be under an investigation and inquiry of that whole thing, which I think is kind of a good thing, but I don't know. Whether you're South African or you're not South African, it depends on the way you look at it, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, th- th- anyway, that's the, the update on that. Going to be an inquiry yeah. rather than video on his act towards the referee, which is fair. Yeah, right, I mean, rightfully so. You, you can't do what Ras- Erasmus did and expect to, to be yeah. unscathed, essentially. Um, we have kind of got two questions this week. One was most like, but we kind of dwelled on it a few weeks ago, but I'll, I'll be fair. So Rug Place asked, World Cup prediction and why? Yeah, um, I mean, for me, I, I like I, it's hard to look past France. Obviously, we haven't seen them play really in a while. Obviously, we saw them play in Australia, but it was a bit of their kind of a mix between the second and third team. But since properly since the Six Nations, I think France are building very nicely. And, and um, I'm trying to think of his name. Um, why can't I think of his name? The Fabien Galtier, sorry, that's I, his name always disappears to my head. Fabien Galtier is doing an amazing job in terms of building his French youth. A very gutsy call in fairness, dropping Morgan Parra and Camille Lopez, even though they still had a bit of rugby left in them at the time. And given yeah. you know the likes of Dupont and Mac game time, and now you look at the, the depth of their building. I think France could win it, definitely get to the semi final final. But yeah, it's just because of their youth, because of their squad depth. They play some nice rugby. Yeah, so I'm going with France. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that, but I'm I'm not going to give you the same team. I think that's a bit boring. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm actually... You're, there's one... There are clear favourites. There are always going to be clear favourites. But it's nobody's hard. really... <laughs> <laughs> get to a quarter-final, get to a semi-final, then we'll talk. Oof, Sorry. It's... It's going to be, as I think, South Africa or New Zealand. Mm. Yeah. I think South Africa is going to want to prove a point like why they're the world champions. Mm. I mean, they missed, they essentially missed two years of international rugby in a way. Yeah. Yeah. New Zealand hadn't. And you know what? The players that are coming through New Zealand are now, it's, it's unreal as well. Mm. I, I obviously want the home nations to do relatively well. But that's that's a different video for a different time. <laughs> but because we kind of dwelled on that a few, few weeks ago, I did write down another question that was second place in the poll. But it was a good question. We haven't really covered this. So Patrick Murphy four three four asked, "Can you name the best player from each?" He said Pro fourteen, but we've gone for the full URC team, so that we've included the South African teams as well the best player from each of those teams. So, we'll start with Ulster. Who you got? Uh, I have, I kind of had two here, between Ian Henderson as a kind of a leader, and he's a pretty, he's a decent, like he doesn't shine as a player, but Ian Henderson and John Cooney, I think are yeah. pretty fiery players. Yeah, I've gone John Cooney. So I thought it was the easiest one when I was writing them down. Yeah. No brainer. Um, for the defending champions, Benetton. You can't pick Paul Garbisi because he's moved on. Very fair. I went for Jaden Hayward. I think he's just been pretty... He's doing all right. Well, obviously, uh, I'm sure there was someone else I could have put in there, but I, I can't even think straight. But I put in Jaden Hayward. <laughs> I think Jaden Hayward's 
potentially leaving, but it's not. No, he's not like signed to a new club. But I'll give you it for the time being. All right, cheers. I've right. gone. You're thinking of sorry, I was just I was also thinking of Mont- Montoyani, but. Yeah, that's what I've got. I've got Mon- I've got Monty Ioanni because he's he's unreal. He's a freak. Yeah, he's very good. Uh, we'll go. I'm just mixing it up here. I have wrote them down in a specific order, but I don't want to be boring. Yeah, while we're record, so yeah. we'll go for the we'll go for South Africa. We'll go for the Lions. Um, I well, in fairness, you had me with this one. Oh well, you had me with a few of them. Elton Yankees. Um, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Murray, for helping me with that. <laughs> You're welcome, mate. Don't worry, we're all, we're all on the same team here. It's fine. Yeah, Ellen Yanchi's unreal for the Lions. He is back there for anyone trying to be smart about it in the comments. He he was on he was at Pau mm. in France, but it was a three month deal, so no, he's back in South Africa. Don't panic. Mm. Um, we'll go to Wales now. We'll go for the Dragons. Uh, Ross Moriarty there. Can't really look past him. Fair enough. I've not gone for Ross Moriarty. I've gone for Aaron Wainwright, but yeah, fair. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll go to Ireland now. You're both over Ireland. We'll go for Connor. Uh, I went with Jack Carthy, and I kind of say that on a on a weird way because he hasn't been in proper form as of late. Um, but right. I, I just went for Jack Carthy on his day. He's a very good player, and obviously he single handedly beat Leinster in last March. So <laughs> we'll take that. <laughs> fair enough. I've gone for the for the big man himself. I've gone for Bujaki. Very fair. That's just because. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, go back to we'll go back to South Africa. We'll go for the Stormers. Uh, I think Peter Steffi Toy. You can't look past him. Yeah. Peter Steffi Toy, absolutely unreal. Um, noticeable mention as uh, Stephen Kitchoff. He is actually the captain of the Stormers as well. So, but yeah, leaps Steffi Toy leaps and bounds ahead. Yeah. So. Thanks, um, we'll go for Glasgow. We'll go for Glasgow Warriors now. Um, well, I suppose we're true. I think we're true seven of the clubs. Do you want to go first for the last seven? Yeah, sure. Why not? So, Glasgow, I've gone for Ali Price. He's been phenomenal on this Lions tour. Arguably top 10 scrum half in world rugby right now. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. Ali Price as well, yeah. Uh, go for Munster. So, I I was a I was a toss up for Munster. I've wrote down two players. I've gone for Tyg Burn. Yeah, and I've gone for Damien Delande. I just think I just think he's unreal, and Mm -hmm. I mean he's just won the line too as well. So, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) both of those players are absolutely class on their day but I went somewhere different I actually picked Gavin Coombs for this one I don't know he kind of just stuck out obviously he had a brilliant oh yeah yeah Gavin Coombs is a decent player very young as well yeah so you know he's got a bright future ahead of him hopefully but yeah um, go back to Wales we'll go for the Charlottes that's you you're going first <laughs> uh, well people don't faint because this is not a drill <laughs> Best player at Scarlet's Blissful Rugby. Molly Anderson is picking William Williams. Oh, that's a shocker. Oh, I bet him he's actually died when I said that there. But no, like, this, <laughs> like all like jokes aside, he, he is a good player and he does do well for the Scarlet. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. He's a, he's a decent player overall. But um, I went with... He's not? No, I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um... For this one, obviously, he was at Claremont for a couple of years, but Jonathan Davis, well, on his day, obviously, maybe not as of late, obviously, he hasn't been getting picked for Wales, but he's, he's a mm-hmm. different player. Yeah, still still a great player. Still got it in him. Yeah. And you've got, then you've got, like, the guy, like, so, like, Kieran Hardy and even Ken Owens, who's the captain of Scarlet's as well, so. Absolutely. But, yeah, uh, we'll go to South Africa. We've got two more in South Africa to do. We'll go for the Sharks. I've gone for Springbok captain Sia Khaleesi, and to me, one I think he's actually quite an underrated winger. Nobody talks about him compared to his counterpart, hmm. Makazuli Mapimpe. Unreal, unreal talent. Yeah, um, I I I went for Khaleesi, not gonna lie, but absolutely now that you've mentioned Mapimpe, he's been in flying form. Like he is, he, he's hard to look past. Like he's yeah. quite for you've, you've also got a shark stop on. As well, actually, yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> very, very well noticed. Actually, yeah, I, yeah, I should probably wear this more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, we'll just finish off with the South African teams. Gone for the Bulls. I've gone for the legend himself. Easily top 10 in my lifetime of favourites. It's Morne Stain. Mm. I just, I love him. I've never had anything bad or negative to say about Morne Stain. And the 37 year old won the Lions series. Yeah. I was going to say single handedly, but it was more single bootedly. <laughs> it was a pick, so, yeah. But, that's very fair. I think even with Morne Stain is. I watched a couple of the highlights from the Rainbow Cup and he still seems to be going pretty... Like he doesn't get enough credit of people saying, oh, he's 37, he'll come on and win it with his boot, which he did. But I think, you know, he's still doing pretty all right in terms of his ball and play and his cross kicks. He's still very accurate. He's still well able to pull up something like so. What a player. Yeah. Unreal. Um, and we'll go to the Ospreys. The one... Oh, sorry, it's you. Sorry. I don't know why I'm saying no, go for it. It's all right. All right, I'll should have said, yeah. Uh, one name that kind of just stuck out for me, just straight away, I didn't even think of anyone else, just George North. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fair. George but, North. Sorry. I, I would have... Sorry, I was just going to say, I think a couple of years ago, I probably would have said Reese Webb, like he was very in very good form. He was probably one of the best scrum ass I thought in the world. But obviously, that was very iffy with Wales. He was getting in and out of the Wales squad. But I thought yeah. Reese Webb used to be class, but obviously he's not really anymore. But... <laughs> See, there is a noticeable name that I didn't put for the Ospreys. It's Alan Wynne Jones. But there's a he doesn't play a whole lot for mm. for the Ospreys, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like regular game time. It's I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like, he obviously, they obviously they have a like a setup at the Ospreys that works for them. But I'm just like. Maybe throw an Alan Jones. I don't even see him on the bench half the time. Yeah, I suppose so. it's very similar to with the answer with Johnny Sexton. Like Johnny Sexton hardly ever played. He rarely, I don't think he, I think he might have only featured less than a handful of times for Leinster in the Pro 14 last year. And he only generally only often starts in the Champions Cup, and then the rest you mightn't even see him in the in the Pro 14. Like you know, so very yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just stuck in Wales. We'll go for uh, Cardiff. Yeah, no, it's hard to look past uh, Josh Adams. He's uh, on flying form and great player. Yeah, can't argue with that at all. Um, I've actually gone for a different Josh as well. I have wrote down Josh Adams, but I've gone for Josh Navidi as well. Great pick. What a player. Because he's been at Carter for ages and he just doesn't seem to be slowing down like at all. Mm. Uh, well, back to Ellie. I actually forgot about this one. Zebra. Yeah, I won't. Uh, I won't go. Like, I, won't, I won't skip ahead of you like I've been doing the last two goals. I'm sorry. Good. <laughs> I couldn't actually think of many good Zebra players. I think Zebra have been left in the dust, especially this past season with Benetton doing so well. Hmm. I've gone for Carol Kana. I can't think of anyone else. There's no one that yeah. screams yeah. to me. I went. So, yeah. I went the exact same. I, I had a quick flick through their squad. I do want to be honest. There wasn't even that many names that I even recognised. Like I think I, I feel sorry for Zebra in that way. That either they're not either developing good enough players or they're not even signing good players. So either that's yeah. Something there. But like you know, they they used to have some decent players. Like the odd few players that they used to have. But there's been a lot of yeah. transfers between Zebra and Benetton. It's a pity for them. Yeah. And lastly, my beloved Edinburgh. I've gone for. Just the man, the myth, the legend now. He's not the mullet anymore because he got it cut off. And I'm absolutely heartbroken by it, but still, <laughs> world-class player, Hamish Watson. Yeah, the hard you said, you, Yeah. You said you were going to oh, defend yeah. me. You I, said I, you were going to... I, see, I put in Hamish Watson, but I also had a, like, a slash beside the name. So before I put down Hamish Watson, I put down... Villamy Mata. I, I love Mata so much. He's a great player. Yeah, you know what? That's I'm I'm perfectly fine with you. Pecking Bill Mata. I think Edinburgh's like got untouched product that no one for club wise doesn't really talk about. Like so Hamish Watson, Bill Mata, yeah, Jamie Ritchie. Like that's your back row. Absolutely. That's class. Um uh, who else? Grant Gil Chris. I know Grant Gil Chris is getting on a bit now, but Mm. Still does a solid job. I would have said Rory Sutherland, but he's left. 
and left me heartbroken as well, like Duhan van der Merwe has. <laughs> I, although, to be fair, I still probably would have picked Mish because yeah. he's just on a whole different level and he's he's an Edinburgh legend as well. Absolutely. I think um, we also, I think we have one more team left, I think. I think it's, uh, I think, I don't think we did Leinster. Oh, oh, it's the, it's the big one. It's Leinster. I completely, yeah. yeah. Leinster. You We've go got Leinster today. Thank you for remembering. I don't know how I forgot Leinster. <laughs> so again, I've done a toss up. I've gone Tig for long because he is arguably the best tight head in world rugby. Yeah. I've gone for uh, Robbie Henshaw, one of the best in ours, if not the best, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. Um, I went for Henshaw as well. I think it's, I think he's seen even yes from what I heard I, even yesterday he seemed to do pretty all right. I think he's really punching above his weight henshaw. To be honest, even my own expectation to be honest of how his <laughs> even pan out. He's he's phenomenal. He's had a brilliant year for Ireland and Leinster and now the Lions. Yeah, Ireland. yeah, uh, just unreal, just raw talent. Yeah, I can't. A little bit of me still wishes he stayed at Connacht though with Bundy. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> but you know what? You do what's best for you. I, I've never judged players. Especially rugby is a totally different ball game to football. I know football fans get like to heart if players leave the club and join like a rival team. Yeah, but like let's be honest, all, like there is no rivalry in rugby. You get like geography hmm. rivals. That games are a little bit more heated, but at the end of the day, ninety percent of them play for the national team together. They're all mates. Yeah. The term rival, it's, it's not really a thing in rugby, I don't think. I feel like. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say about Robbie Henshaw, and then, and to defend him, he's actually, he's from Athlone originally. I don't know if you know where that is, but it's like on the border between Connacht and Leinster. So like he, right. he would have like played his Gaelic football, probably even went to school in Leinster. But technically, I think the rugby club is technically in Connacht. So he would have been playing his rugby like technically in Connacht for the most part. Yeah, so he's... I think, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I think that's one of the ones where you're like, you know, he's but he's he probably identifies to be honest as from both kind of Leinster. So like I think that's not yeah. where he, he just you know decided to you know spitefully move to like you know the, the rival or the, the rival as you said, the rival province. Um, you know, but yeah, <laughs> just to defend him there. <laughs> no, I, I totally got when it came out that he moved to Leinster makes sense. Yeah. And that's all I said because like Let's be honest, at the time, Leinster were winning Champions Cups and Pro 14. It's like it was going out of fashion. Mm. So, was, yeah, it makes sense. Get some <laughs> get some silverware. You yeah. know, when you're starting to wind down, go back to Connacht. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Absolutely. Lots of, lots, and lots to think about. Maybe even if he wants to earn his money, why not earn it in France? Mm, well, yeah, why not? Have him and Finn all year round at Rassen. Why not? That would be beautiful. <laughs> I mean, Simon Zebo's back now. He's in. He's at Munster. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good pickup for Munster as well, and potentially even Ireland. You know, I think that's. Yeah. You know, he, he still has a. He was, as you've mentioned, with Finn Russell at Racing himself, and and Russell have, have been tearing it up for Racing, like absolutely. And I believe that they're like they they became best buds, Russell and and yeah. So <laughs> what a, what a there's, a, there, there's another famous nickname that I'll go to my grave because I don't understand it. Simon Zebo famously calls Finn Russell white chocolate. I don't get it. I don't understand it. It got to the point Finn has now put up a picture of him kicking yet from the third tip. <laughs> the caption is just a white and a like a white circle and a chocolate bar with a question mark. I'm like, I what does that mean? I saw that. <laughs> I, was like, I don't get what you mean. Speaking of Finn Russell, I seen this earlier. I I think I shared it with you and Simeon. But linking all the way back to the MLR final, Matt Ghetto hmm. wants to grow up and be like Finn Russell, even though he's older. I thought that was great. I loved that. Absolutely. When I grow up, I want to be like Finn <laughs> Russell. Just absolute freedom. I'm like... <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, look, you know you're having a good career when Matt Ghetto is complimenting you on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, class. The fact that he wants to be like you when he grows up, even though Matt Ghetto's pushing 40 and Finn Russell's only 26. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a few more episodes to do I think we should put the listeners into perspectives that we are taking time off relatively soon we're taking at the end of August we're taking a three week gap just because there's no point us 
rambling on about nothing. Yeah. Essentially, let's, let's be honest. In the tail end of August, there's not a whole lot of rugby on. Hmm. The Premiership doesn't resume until the 17th of September. I imagine that's around about the same time the URC starts up. Hmm. Maybe when the release fixtures might really help us out with that <laughs> one. <laughs> so yeah, we will. We're not like calling it quits. We're not just dabbling in this. Like we will be back. Yeah. There will be like a season two, as you put it. But yeah, just to put everyone in perspective, not not to be worried when we just cut off. We're not cut off. We're just. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. Like, we're going to, it's going to be a long season with a lot of episodes. So, you know, with the season starting, we'll be, as you said, we'll be back in September, you know, through mid September, through all the way, possibly even this time next year. Maybe, well, maybe not because there'll be no Lions tour, but, you know, all the way into next summer, I'd imagine we'll probably be going. So, which would be yeah. a long season. So, you know, there'll be plenty more episodes. Don't you worry, listeners, from us this season. <laughs> and I keep, I keep hammering at home and I don't drop any names in it, but this, we are going to get some big names on this show. Hmm. Some we've somehow been sitting on, but I had this rant with Sean before we started recording. <laughs> there's there's some names that Sean knows, there's some names that Simeon knows, there's some that I'm in close counters with. Hmm. Shall we say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, we're going to get some big names on. Absolutely. And it's not just... Not, nothing against the guests we've had. We love every guest because we wouldn't have approached them if we didn't want them. And like, we are for the fans and it's nothing better to have fans that are passionate and going on this journey with us, like Gemma, who's prop wife. She's a great person, big fan of rugby in general, big advocate for women's rugby. Howdy has a bit more experience on his side so he can give you a little bit of history on rugby. But again, a big passionate fan as well. Harvey, He's 16 years old and can out-talk pretty much anyone on Rugby Union yeah. if you sit down with them. Or any sport. Um, <laughs> Scott Ferreira, our first overseas mm. guest. Yeah, like we are we are getting there slowly but gradually. And I think when we proper go for it, come September, and the guests we hit you with, you'll be like, holy shit, the Rugby Connection podcast has has arrived. We have, we don't just say it's arrived as a slogan. Like we we are going to we are going to be the best rugby show. Let's be honest. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like we're going to be overtaking all the rugby podcasts. You know the good, the bad, the rugby. All these rugby podcasts. We're going to be up there, number one on the charts. <laughs> the rugby pod get Jim Hamlin on here. Why not? Yeah, pretty um, good on the show. Who knows? You know, there's infinite possibilities in terms of crossovers, collabs with different, yep. you said, players, coaches, rugby brands, everything. So, yeah. Yeah, who knows? But we're, we are taking it up a notch. Yeah. I'm throwing, I know Sean and Simeon are very busy as well, but I have threw our shot out there for the most part. And you know what? For the most part, it's actually got relatively good feedback. Yeah. I've got, I've got an important call tomorrow. I'm not again. I'm not dropping names. I don't like dropping them until it's confirmed. Sean knows what I'm on about. That's all that matters. As long as Sean and Simeon are in the mix, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter. We we like to keep you on your toes as well. Um, but again, I mean, this week coming interview Thursday, possibly the most requested guest <laughs> in the history of the Rugby Connection podcast. Yeah, we've got um, we got Rugby Kyle Kyle Barrett on the show. We've finished recording. We had him on before we recorded the episodes. That's how we work. We'd get our guests on, do that bit, and then record the normal episode. Mm. And, yeah, it was worth the wait. That's all I could say. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great episode. And uh, looking forward to, for everyone to hear it. One thing I will say, actually, Murray, I will have to say to you, fair play, and thank you for sending out all your messages and emails and phone calls and, you know, getting, you know, blanks from some clubs unfortunately but you know it's it's it, it, it's it help, it helping the podcast and as you said we're taking it up another notch but just while yeah. I'm here i also just want to thank someone who also just like kyle does with all our pages he's also sharing it all the time but yeah. someone who shares a lot of the podcast in fairness to her is megan owen she also makes ruby yeah Day. so thanks a lot megan we really appreciate it for sharing our yeah she's she's class big fan and uh, mark from 
support yeah. of the podcast. He's a big follower of ours. Go and check out his show. Absolutely. Our show's better, but <laughs> there's a lot. Of, <laughs> no, but Sean covers a lot of sport. He gets a lot of Paralympians, a lot of rugby players. Just If you're a general sport fan, go and check out his, because it is class. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm, I'm, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say on Mark's page, he has he's had quite a few rugby guests as well in fairness to him. So he's had, he's yeah. had Andy Friend, he's had Owen McKeown, he's had Harry McNulty. Uh, they're just to name a few, you know, so go check out his podcast as well. As you said, Murray, you know, ours is better, but like, no, no, no. <laughs> just a friendly banter. No, but fair play, like fair play, Mark. Ours is, ours is different. There you go. Yeah, it's yeah. different. But, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, this has been a blast. Like, I can't believe we're now in double digits. Yeah. It's been uh, it's been going quickly, hasn't it? It's, yeah, and the rise for like TikTok and that as well. It's it's humbling. It's unreal. Mm. Like, I think I was just over or just below two hundred followers when mm. we recorded the unaired episode, <laughs> which is better that it didn't go out. <laughs> the the OG episode one <laughs> that never went out because the audio was horrible. Yeah, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> um, it was absolutely horrible, but I was at 200 or just shy of 200 followers when we did that. Mm. We're in 10 episodes in, and I'm sitting at just under 1,500 followers. So that's amazing. Just th- yeah. thank you for all the support. Like, Sean, your page has grown massively as well. Simeon's, he's glory hunting. He's a big, famous person now. He gets pictures and Everything taken, so yeah, but he's, again, he's took the world by oh, not the world, he's took Wales by storm. Yeah, I know there's a lot of Welsh rugby talkers that just mention him, I, they know him. Yeah, and the, the fact that he gets top photos and that, like, fair play. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, he's an A list celebrity in Wales now, really. Like, you know, he's going to be having you know contracts for ad adverts and everything, you know, in the future, so fair play to me. No, but also we also have to mention while well, you know obviously Murray, congratulations to you on fifteen hundred. Same two seconds. He, I believe he crossed fifteen thousand during the week. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, 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 def- the difference between me and Sammy and Alone is seven. And- <laughs> I mean, but when you think about it, your bro- your growth rate is probably higher than his though. So you know you got to take the positive. But uh, yes. <laughs> seriously, though, congratulations to you both. As you said, like the, like between each of us, like our channels and the podcast, each of us, we're bringing each other up, like, which is great. Like, you know, it's, it's fantastic. I think as a whole, the three, not the pod page in particular, but even still, that's got like over a thousand likes. Yeah, not bad, yeah. I noticed, I'm guessing it was you that done it, but I noticed something very sneaky that we did on the podcast TikTok page. So we have so many followers and we follow like eight people and it's the three of us. And it's the, yeah, no, absolutely. Sorry, I, I my Wi-Fi went a bit there, but I, I heard what you said. But yeah, we, we follow. Yeah, only our, only your guests. You have to be exclusive. You want to get followed by the Ruby Flexion Podcast. You got to be wanted. You got to be co- come on the podcast first. <laughs> yeah, I like that because I, I read it the other day and I read like like eight followers. Who we following? And I clicked on it. Makes sense. That's who we've had on the show. I like that. And I mean, this week, um, what I did sneakily was, so obviously we announced that we were having Kyle on, but I don't think, we didn't really tell too many people that we had Kyle on or that we were having him on. And I actually followed Kyle early on the podcast page. So if you were checking to see who you were following, you might have found out, you know, exclusive insight into who we were Yeah, there you go. If you you really want to be ahead of everyone (laughs) else, you can go on the page. Yeah. I mean, if it doesn't update, then we're not telling you. No. (laughs) I mean, it's quite funny because if like when we get the big ones that we're we've been teasing, mm. I'm not telling. Like my parents are big supporters of me. Obviously, yeah. they love the show. They love your accent, particularly <laughs> that that gets talked about a lot. They love your <laughs> accent. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they they're like, oh, who 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 you got on? I'm like, you don't know them. It's fine. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Keep it under wraps. You can't have any leaks like the Lions and no. the US, you know. Yeah, so, oh, uh, no. No, so, like, the likes of, like, Gemma, Harvey, how they know. I just say, like, it's rugby TikTokers. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just tell my parents, like, oh, it's a rugby TikToker, but check it anyway, because they, they definitely know their stuff. And, but if it, when we get to the point of 
professional players or referees or coaches that and my parents go who is it I have to watch it and find out <laughs> just to be a surprise like I don't even the fact that I don't tell my parents who's on the show tells you how secretive we like we run the place <laughs> everything is kept under uh, lock and key here <laughs> I, I don't even tell I rarely tell my parents the calls I've had for the show out there you go. I just, I've spoken to these clubs. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. I don't say what they've said or... No. Find out. Yeah, yeah. Go listen to it. Check out the reaction yeah. <laughs> go, support, go support it. Share it. Yeah. But yeah, I'll say thank you for all the support. Not just for me, but for Sean's page, for Simeon's page. Mm-hmm. For the podcast itself, like 10 episodes in. It's, it's crazy. We've already had double digits. It's unreal. We're only going to get better. We're only going to get bigger. Yeah, just thanks for all the support. And I think, I think that's it. I can't. I couldn't say thank you forever in a day. I'm not going to. So, yeah. Sean, I'll let you. I'll let you close it out. Yeah. No. Absolutely. You. You said it all there, Murray. Everyone, thanks a million for tuning in. If you made it this far. Uh, which hopefully your ears aren't bleeding too much but uh, if you made it this far please make sure to subscribe down below if you're subscribing on either spotify um or on youtube please press that subscribe button it really helps us out and please like the video as well so thanks a million for tuning in everyone and we'll see you all next week song of fall see you later.